Hello and welcome to our game with myself, Shane Stapleton, on this um, St. Paddy's Day. I'm joined by uh, Enda Varley at the moment. We're going to have Derek Honan on later on and David Connors at the Tomb Hurl. Um, Enda, you probably have better things to be doing on Paddy's Day. I'd say you want to attack today. <laughs> not, sure, not sure, Shane. Got two kids now, so I've, I'm enough on the plate to be good honest with you. You're not going to be stuck in the pub for today, no? Uh, I wish. I wish. I might get a pint in somewhere. No more you yourself. Are... Um, look, there's a reason this show was going on an awful lot earlier than it normally was. <laughs> it's supposed to be a lunchtime offering, but we're here we are. Um, do you have any issue with, um, you know, Paddy's Day, traditionally Club All-Ireland, stuff like that? Do you do you mind that today doesn't really have high-profile GA? There's not, our Skull, Skull Reach are going to be up against St. Kieran's in the school's final. But other than that, do you, is it something that bothers you? Um, I suppose from, look at, probably now when I'm kind of, near in retirement as in like from a spectator point of view you'd always you know watching the club final in, in a pub on Paddy's Day was always it was always a nice uh, nice thing to do um on the other side of the fence as a player it's a bloody pain in the arse to be honest going that length of time as you know your yourself Shane with Kula and I Vince is we got to a semi-final and it was in the middle of February like but um I, per, I personally found that year very very long in terms of um you know, you're, you're certain we started our championship in April and then we finished up February of the following year. So it was, it was, you know, you, you, you see why club teams and I suppose Kerr Finn is the exception to this, that they don't do back to back too many times because it's just, you know, mentally and physically, um, it's just very, very tough um, to do that. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the league and uh, the inter-county situation at the moment, just to give the sort of pecking order in Division 1 at the moment. Kerry are top, followed by Mayo and Armagh, who are two points behind on seven. Then you have Donegal on five, Monaghan four, Tyrone and Kildare on three, and Dublin are bottom uh, on two points. Last weekend, Armagh, they won at home to Kildare. Kerry beat your Mayo, won 12 to 15 points. Mm -hmm. Dublin went up to Oman, won by five, and Monaghan beat Donegal in Bally Buffet, their first home defeat there in 12 years. Yeah. Just to ask you about Mayo... Where do you think Mayo are at? And obviously this weekend is a repeat of last year's All-Ireland final. So do you feel like Mayo will want to lay down any sort of a marker? Yeah, funny, Shane. I suppose when you kind of think about the league, I suppose it's it's a bit different this year with the with the championship, championship being so close. The league is a bit of a... I suppose teams are at different phases of training load at this stage of the year. And it's very hard to judge where teams are at. For example, Mayo now, they're only five weeks away from championship, the first round in Scalway. So I'd imagine their train load is extremely high at the moment. Um, and you can, can kind of see from James's uh, team selection that he is still kind of experimenting a small bit um, around, you know, his panel of players. And, and you know, with five weeks out, he, he's try, trying to nail down his, his starting 15 and the five lads have come off the bench. Um, like... Uh, Tyrone again as I said to you with all the teams and everyone's out at a different stages of the championship so you know the, the six week seven week block before championship then teams are going to be training extremely like the running is going to be ferocious and you know they might look dead in terms of in one league game and come to the towards the end of the league the teams might be looking a bit better like so with Mayo I, I, I don't think James would be too worried about winning the league to be honest I don't think you know, have they decided the league final date? I, I know Mayo are out. I think it's the 24th of April, Mayo are out against Galway. So the league, I think, they might be two weeks, the league final might be two weeks before that. So it's it's a very hard one to judge, as in, you know, as a manager, I'm not sure, do you want do you want it so close to, to a championship game, especially against Galway? Because that's going to be, that's going to be a very, very tough game. And Galway are going so well now in Division 2 as well. Do you know, I was speaking with Paul Fitzpatrick of the anglo Celt the other day, and he was talking about some of the teams in the north, and he had this to say about Tyrone. I'd be interested to see your own thoughts on it. I do think they were the weakest All-Ireland champions in a good few years. And in fairness... It's Can you explain what you mean by that? <clears throat> I think that, that after a team, you get a really dominant superpower. Sometimes you get a period of flux for a couple of years where a team can nip in and win. Even at county championship level, you see this where maybe the standard drops a little and a team can nip in and win one or maybe two. And I think Tyrone fit the profile of that team. I couldn't see this Tyrone team doing what the Tyrone team did under Mickey Hart and win three in six years. I, I, I just don't think so. And I think that um, 
they just sort of nipped in there in the post Dublin era and Mayo did the hard work for them. They're fully deserving winners in the All Ireland final. But there was a kind of a whole narrative around the All Ireland semi final that Kerry were atrocious. You know, the post mortems were very, very clinical down in Kerry. Kerry were absolutely atrocious and their own were absolutely brilliant and yet yet their own victim by one point after extra time. So, you know, that suggests that probably suggests that their own had to play absolutely out of their skins to be the Kerry team who were playing poorly on, on the day. I know Clifford went off as well. So I I think that they they really wrung a lot out of out of them last year and I couldn't see them winning another All Ireland this year. Would you would you go along with what Paul is saying there? I would, to be honest. I think the fact that, I suppose, Brian Duhern and Fergal Lone came in uh, after the Mickey Hart era, I think it probably, you know, rejuvenated the whole squad. And, you know, they, it's always the kind of first year kick. They got that kick last year and they capitalised on that. So do I see, I'd agree with them. I can't see this Tyrone team going three and, you know, three all Ireland in six years. I really can't. I think, um, I just think with, even... Even with the six players leaving the panel this year, you know, the squad, I know people are saying, well, they weren't getting much game time. But when you're in a squad like that and you're, you know, the AVB's uh, games for championship, like, having a squad is so, so important and lads pushing themselves on. And it just, when when lads see, we'll say, that amount of players going, it, it just creates a bad vibe or a bad, I don't know, it, a bad vibe around the place. Do you know what I mean? So it's, you know, it's, it's just, can they replace them guys and some of them are experienced players as well, and they would add a lot to the the second team in in the training sessions as well. So, and it also pushes the the the, the first fifteen on as well. There's nothing worse than complacency within a within a squad or within a team environment. And you kind of even Dublin last year, the, the, we we saw that their squad wasn't as 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 good as uh, years previous to that, and they ultimately uh, paid the price for that. So. There's nothing worse, Shane, as you know yourself. If if you're on the first fifteen and you're comfortable. That's that's where a manager doesn't want to be. And if you don't have a second 15 there, or certainly a second uh, five to ten players pushing those lads on, well then it's not a it's not a recipe for for a winning team. So the, like just to go through some of the players that they're missing: Lee Brennan, Tiernan McCann, Mark Bradley, Ronan O'Neill, Hugh Pat McGeary, and Michael Cassidy. Jeez, you know, a lot of teams would cry out for lads of that quality. But uh, Darren McCurry was talking this week about the players who left and. He himself said he wouldn't have stayed on if Mickey Hart hadn't have because he felt that no matter what, he was always going to be the lad taken mm -hmm. off. But he said about the lads leaving, I just felt that it was maybe, what way would you put it, an easy decision for some of the boys to walk away where maybe they were thinking a wee bit more about themselves than the Tyrone people, uh, the Tyrone team and the people of Tyrone. So I'm not quite sure if that tallies with the idea that he was going to leave himself or like, can you understand where he's coming from too? Um, look, I suppose Darren is, he's in the environment there, he's in the team environment, he's being selfish ultimately, for, you know, for himself there, he wants the lads to stay on, obviously to push that team environment on, to push the team on, that squad, and does he see with those six lads, um, if the, those six lads uh, stayed on, would that team be more successful, you'd have to argue they would, so look, he's coming from a, a kind of selfish uh, place there, where he wants obviously Tyrone uh, to do as well as they can, and you know, I, I, I don't know that the lads are going to replace them now. It's, it's you know, I don't know uh, Tyrone Club football that well, like, but I'd imagine within six lads, especially three of them, Tiernan McCann is a very ex experienced player. Mark Bradley has been there a long time. So, you know, voices in the dress room. Um, you know, I can tell you, Shane, like the AVBs, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a very, very important um, um it's very important we say the weeks coming up to championship where lads are pushing on and pushing each other and you get the best out of each other so especially in Ulster football as you know yourself it's so bloody competitive so they, they'll need that especially against the Donegal's Monaghan's of these worlds and even Derry now are coming coming on a bit um in, in division two there so they'll need they'll need that that uh, that intensity in training and you know that's where the squad comes in so when you look at sometimes those A versus B games, it probably is pretty important that management teams do make the, the players on that B team feel like they're important because obviously they need them to shape and mould the first team. Have you been in situations where you've seen that that hasn't been the case and guys have maybe unnecessarily walked away or maybe you've been on the B team at times and you're like, I almost don't exist to this management team. Why would I want to be here? Yeah, it's a fine, it's a fine line. It's very hard, Shane, to keep lads kind of motivated. But in fairness to James, that's one I, I would really say that's one of his strengths. As in, if you're, <clears throat> he even 
it's not even the AVBs on the Sunday before the, the week before the game. It's even mini games before that as well, the 10, 15 minutes. And they call out, they call out the, the teams and it's not, it's not an AVB, it's just a training kind of game. And like, like James, like one of, one of the faults we'd always, uh, kind of, we'd always say that uh, James would be a poor communicator. And, uh, you know, he didn't really have to communicate because with those teams being named out, if you weren't, um, you know, if you had a bad week or two, you'd be on, you'd know who's the main, you know, the guys on the first team. And if you're, if you're on the kind of second team, then he wouldn't even have to say words yet. You'd be like, right, I need to step things up here or fucking, I'm going to, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to make this here. Do you know what I mean? Like, J- like James wouldn't even have to say words yet. It's just the, li- you know, you'd, you'd be in that situation as well, Shane, where the two teams are being called out and it's not an AVB, but it's many kind of games in training the weeks coming up for championship. And if you're on the second team, uh, you'd know, right, I need to set this up here or, you know, I'm not going to make it. Okay. And Mind like, games. so, <laughs> yeah. So what do, what do people mean when they say like, not, he's not a good, commu- like, I'm sure he is a good communicator, but like, yeah. when the word goes out there that he isn't, what do people mean? Do you think? Um, I suppose, um, I suppose local shame, there's 30, 30 odd lads in the squad. You're never going to keep everyone happy. So it's just, no. it's, I suppose, <laughs> is he going to be on the phone every week? He can't be on the phone every week to each player. Like, so it's just, I suppose, um, that would have been, I suppose, yeah, that, that might've been leveled at him. Maybe the second, second 15, uh, off the squad. Like it was, you know, there was, there was, there wasn't much communication, but at the end of the day, I suppose in, in scenarios like that, uh, what I just said there, you know, you, you do your talking on the pitch. Yeah. There's only so much thing, uh, James can say to you. And if you're not, you know, I suppose, I suppose lads got frustrated maybe, all right, what do I need to do here to make this team? What do I have to work on? What what do you see in me that I don't have that, you know, to, to make the difference, to, to push on to that first 15? I suppose that would be kind of things that uh, over the years um, uh, guys be saying, saying, saying to the management team, not just James, but yeah, saying to the management team, as you know, it's a long season back, uh, you know, back 10 years ago, the season was nine, 10 months. So it's a long Long time to keep lads happy, and in fairness to James, there was never too many lads walking away. It was always very competitive, and you even see now with the league squads, you know, even this this week with Tyrone, he's given lads chances uh, again. And we'll say if lad, especially if if you made a debut under James and he had, if you had a poor game, in fairness to him, he he just he just throw you in again the next day. Do you know what I mean? He he wouldn't he wouldn't hold that against you. He'd he'd always his mantra would be if if it was a choice between an old player and a younger player the younger player would always get the benefit of the doubt because you know for obvious reasons that guy is pushing on the older guy it doesn't matter damn if you have 10 years experience in Mayo what can you do for me in 2022 I don't care what you did for me fucking five years ago uh, and if that young lad and especially when you're trying to break into a, a team like that uh, Shane you know if you're young lad you're you're gonna you're gonna break down walls to try and get onto that that pitch like so it's both the, the older player knows that and he's going to push himself again and the younger player sees an opportunity and he's going to push himself so it just builds a, a great squad environment and it's interesting that you talk about the experienced players like Salih Keegan I'm sure his position is well I suppose as close to guaranteed as you're going to get in this team this year I mean yeah. the all Ireland final last year when everything else was going to pot this lad yeah. was still stepping up the way he always does I see Aidan O'Shea is named at centre back now we've seen him win all stars midfield centre forward and mm. full forward that, like so, the up the upside of this is what a versatile player. Like he even played full back in an All Ireland semi final. The downside is he's what maybe thirty one now, and you're still wondering what is his best position. So, what do you make of this latest uh, evolution at centre back? Yeah, and to, uh, he's played a lot of football actually for Brafey at centre back, and he is to be fair when he when he plays that position for Brafey, he's, he's a bit like quarterback in terms of he 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 kind of you know. What do you want your centre back to, to do? I suppose you want them to try and cover your, their full back line, and you want to try and transition the play from defence into attack as quickly as possible. And Aiden uh, usually kicks the ball a lot, so that's what you kind of. And I suppose the the one criticism that's been levelled with Mayo in the last year to, year or two, it's been their lack of structure, and you know they they play a chaotic uh, this chaotic game, and you know the high press like and. You know, I suppose that we've seen enough of a sample size there with Mayo and under James that 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 system needs needs to be tweaked a small bit. I'm not saying it's it's you know he it's they're 95 percent there. It's just that last five percent. And I suppose, um, 
you know, uh, with Aiden there, centre back, he he's trying him out. He he's seen is he an option there? Uh, I he he did play that kind of sweeper role against Kerry in the first half, and Kerry had the had the breeze, and he he, he was kind of shadowing uh, David Clifford or Mind in the House uh, beside Cora O'Hora, I think was on in the first half. So. Look, it's it's a position Aiden is well accustomed to with 